Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we're working on the Schroll 32 five window project again. And in the last couple of videos, we've been trying to get closer to making it a real car. And one of the next things I need to do before we drop the body down is sort out the slave cylinder situation. So up above me, uh, I have got a master cylinder mounted from a 50s era uh, Ford. Uh, I think it was about in the shoebox era, Ford changed over to a uh, master cylinder that was kind of used for a number of years throughout. And in a early uh, like little book magazine I found when browsing through my collection, I found an article that was basically in the mid, mid to late 50s, an article came out on how to make a hydraulic clutch conversion using factory Ford parts. So there was a big Ford truck, I think in 54, 55-ish, uh, bigger Ford trucks came out with a hydraulic clutch because of the, the size of like the cab overs and things like that. I think the pedal arrangement made it hard to have a hydraulic clutch or have a mechanical clutch so they converted to the hydraulic clutch. So they basically used a master cylinder just like you see here for the clutch master just with like the residual valve or whatever that's inside taken out and then they used a slave cylinder just like you would think of in modern day clutch setups just like this. So I did some Googling and some parts searching and I found a part number and was able to get a slave cylinder from an early Ford truck. So we have a brand new one right here from Napa. Uh, the part number we can drop down in the description down below if anybody's looking to do this. So what I needed to do was make a bracket for this. So the article that I read, they're actually showing how to do it on a flathead vehicle. Uh, so they were making a bracket because of the way the clutch actually activates on those cars uh, with the clutch arm, they actually wanted to mount it the other way like this so that it is pushing the clutch arm like this. So we are actually, the way this is pulling, it needs to push the opposite way. So we need to turn this like this so that it can push out and push on the clutch arm here and activate the clutch so we can uh, work it. So what I need to do is make a bracket that's going to mount kind of close to the uh, bell housing in the engine so that it's not uh, so it's A, it's functioning, functions well and is strong, and B, also looks kind of correct and isn't just like a cobbled together mess. So I'm gonna try and do my best to make a bracket that is like that. It's gonna take two or three pieces of metal to weld together and blend so, like I've done in some other videos where I've made uh, parts that kind of look like they're old cast parts or something that was uh, manufactured back in the day. So I've already made a, a pattern here that kind of is crazy looking, as you guys can see. So this actually mounts up in, oops, I got it flipped. So it actually mounts up underneath here uh, on the bell housing and this will sit like so and it turns a little bit and it mounts up like that. So it's kind of looks odd when it's off the engine, uh, but this is basically what I've come up with one of the parts of the brackets. I need to make an extra piece here, a little ear that's gonna come off and get our second bolt hole location so that this won't uh, bend or, or tweak or, or move in any way. So um, I have another piece here that I've made that's just another little scrap and I have that cut the shape. So what I'm gonna do is take this, uh, these patterns and lay them out on uh, some metal and work on bending and welding and making this part and I'll show you guys kind of the process won't be a lot to show It's just a lot of like cutting grinding welding grinding again, but I will show you guys the process Hopefully I have this bolted up pretty quick All right, so after a little bit of cutting and some sanding, I have two of the pieces. I end up having to make this out of three pieces. I have the third piece here that I haven't sanded or shaped or anything. It's just rough cut. You can see I just roughly cut it with that Eastwood um, like metal 
cutting scroll saw. And uh, I have two pieces here just kind of put together with some magnets. I drilled the hole on the top here, so uh, these kind of odd shaped brackets, gotta make them out of multiple pieces. I started with a piece of quarter inch uh, 90 channel and uh, I drilled by a locating hole here that's gonna bolt into the bottom through the bell housing mount and that should work out well. I have this piece here uh, held in with magnets. So what I'm gonna do is just tack this at 90, two little tacks and then we're gonna test fit it, make sure that's all good. Then I'm gonna sand this little piece here and get it kind of better shaped a little better and closer to size and then I'm gonna fit that up. We're probably gonna have to tack this, drill the hole, bolt this to the, to the engine block and then uh, fit all these pieces up and tack it on the car just because it's kind of an odd shape. And then we could start building bracing and, and things in the corners to give it some more strength and we'll make it look, once it gets all bolted up, then we can make it look kind of cool. But for right now, it's just, this is how far we are. It doesn't look like much, but we will make something cool out of it eventually. And you can see the, um, just give you guys an idea. So this fits in like that. And that will have those two bolts there, we'll mount there. And then we can still get to our bleeder and our line right there can come around. So that's that's what I'm thinking. And then from the front there is where the push rod will come out. So um, looks like, you know, from all my pat my paper patterns, looks like that'll all work pretty good. So get this tacked and start fitting it up and we'll check in once I have it a little bit further. All right, so in the last couple shots, what I was doing is just adding some bracing in the back side. So I kind of blended everything together. I know it's an odd shaped bracket, but uh, it's just what fits the space. But what I did is I took a real big piece of round bar stock in here and I laid it inside and I welded down in the beveled area to get it all in there. And then I blended it all in and it kind of gives kind of the same idea as if something was cast in one piece. It would have like a webbing in here that will give it the bracing that it needs. I got all the holes punched in it and again, it's just supposed to be a kind of a just simple bracket, so to speak, that wasn't so simple. So now that I got everything punched and sanded, I'm gonna test fit it all with the uh, slave cylinder and see how it all lines up and looks. All right. There's our bracket all sanded and looking good. And now everything should, because I've test fitted about 16 times, should fit in here. Oops.
There we go. All right, so we thought the project was done. We got that um, the slave cylinder mounted in, and you guys might have been um, shouting at the screen while I was working on it or questioning me, but when we went to throw the steering box in, totally interfered with the slave cylinder. I was just so worried about getting that bracket and making it and everything that I didn't throw the steering box back in. And we threw the steering box back in for the show and realized that it was not correct. So I gotta do a little um, addition to this video now where I'm gonna need to add a section on. We're gonna put the slave cylinder in front. I'm gonna show you guys here. Um, slow, slave cylinder is here. And I'll take you under the car because we have it on the lift so you can see. So steering box and our bracket are close there. So when I mount this behind, there is no way it's running in. So we could put it in front and that gains us some room, but we're still really, really tight against there and it's hitting. So what I need to do is actually add some spacers or a piece of thick metal I'm gonna weld on to space this out and that should get us past the, uh, past the steering box. But um, so I'm gonna measure that, get a piece of metal to fit in there, and then we'll weld it up, put it back together, and then hopefully then we can call this video good. All right, so after getting those little uh, little spacers welded on, I got everything fit up. I made a little push rod that um, should work. We'll have to see as we start bleeding everything how everything works out. But we got the bracket in, everything fits. We can get a wrench in to bleed everything. Um, a line should fit in there pretty nice and it worked out pretty well. But that was a good example of sometimes when you're in the heat of building things, uh, you forget to test fit something. So that happened to me. It happens quite often just because I'm juggling projects. and doing so many things, I do overlook things, but we got it working. Luckily, it wasn't like the day before we wanted to drive it, and I realized that. So uh, we have a little bit of work to do with plumbing the rest of the brakes. Uh, Steve in the background, uh, off camera, has been working on putting the rear brakes together. We got the brake lines all hooked up for the wheels of time. We just have to make a new brake line that's gonna kind of go off the master cylinder for the brakes and go around the clutch master and then we're gonna make a, a line to go down to the clutch master. And then we can start putting fluid in everything and bleeding the brakes and also the clutch and get that working, which is huge. And then we can kind of turn our focus to getting the engine, uh, get the fuel lines plumbed and all that stuff. So we'll be doing a lot of small projects on this car, kind of behind the scenes, till we get a little closer to getting it actually running and driving. And then we'll start doing a bunch of updates when we get to that point and the car gets closer to actually getting finished. Um, but this was a huge, huge step getting the clutch stuff kind of figured out has been uh, something I've been kind of scratching my head on since we started moving on this car. So that's all I have for this one. Appreciate you guys following along. Catch you later.